In September of 2022, I was hiking through the woods of northern Washington on the Pacific Crest Trail. I came upon a beautiful viewpoint right off of a remote dirt road. All of the other hikers I knew were miles behind me and I was all by myself. As I stopped to take in the view, something caught my eye. It was this a poster with information about a hiker who had gone missing in the area. These types of posters are unfortunately somewhat common to see at trailheads along well-traveled roads, but this was not a normal trailhead. And the more I've learned about Chris Fowler's disappearance, the more I've realized that this is not a normal disappearance. In 2016, Chris Fowler disappeared in Washington state while through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. He hiked into the woods, a severe storm came through, and then he was never seen again. When you put the story like that, it sounds like a pretty straightforward disappearance. However, the more I've researched into this story, including extensive conversations with Chris's stepmother, Sally, the more I've come to the conclusion that things just don't add up to me. I'm not here to push any particular theories. I'm not here to even try and solve this case. I'm just here to simply tell Chris Fowler's story and along the way, ask some important questions and cover some important details that I personally feel have been overlooked by the media when they were covering Chris's case. Let's jump into the story of Chris Fowler. And by the way, guys, I am almost at 50,000 subscribers. I just passed 40,000. I'm getting real close. So if you enjoy content about backpacking, through hiking, and as of late, missing hikers, please hit that subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. So thank you very much. In the spring, of 2016, Chris Sherpa, which was his trail name, Fowler, set out to through hike the Pacific Crest Trail, which runs over 2,600 miles from the Mexican border through California, Oregon, and Washington, all the way to the Canadian border. A lot of you watching probably know that I attempted to through hike the Pacific Crest Trail this past year in 2022. I did most of it, but I didn't finish, so I can tell you firsthand how difficult of a feat a through hike like this is. And despite the difficulty, Chris made it all the way to central Washington by mid-October in 2016, leaving less than 400 miles left until he finished the hike at the Canadian border. On October 12th, the last confirmed sighting of Chris happened at the Cracker Barrel store near White's Pass. And this is a very common spot for PCT hikers to send packages of supplies because it's literally right off of the trail. I sent a box there when I hiked through in 2022. When Chris left the Cracker Barrel store, it's assumed that he was heading back onto the trail to continue hiking north. However, there was a severe storm approaching and according to reports, most other hikers in the area had decided to leave the trail in order to avoid this storm. In fact, some of the last hikers that Chris spoke to indicated that he was kind of debating, going back and forth about whether he wanted to hike out into the storm or whether he wanted to get off the trail like a lot of other hikers were doing. Ultimately, Chris decided to continue hiking and after he left White Pass, he was never confirmed to have been seen again. About an hour after he left, his cell phone was pinged from a nearby tower for the last time. This means that he most likely turned his cell phone off for reasons that we don't know, but you know, it's not unheard of for hikers to turn their cell phones off because they want to preserve battery. That evening, the storm rolled in, bringing heavy rain, wind, and even some snow at the higher elevations in the area. And about a week later, Chris's family, they became concerned and they contacted the authorities. A massive search was conducted spanning across multiple agencies and counties in the state of Washington. Though much of the PCT in Washington was searched, it seems as though the most likely area that Chris had disappeared from was the 28 mile stretch of trail from White Pass where he was last seen, north to Chinook Pass at Highway 410. I honestly don't know the correct pronunciation. It, is it Chinook, Chinook? My understanding is that they focused on this area because if Chris had made it all the way to Chinook Pass, he almost certainly would have used the road there to bail into town and seek refuge. And as someone who has through hiked thousands of miles on the PCT and lots of other long distance trails, this absolutely makes sense to me. If you're out there and you get hit with like a storm that's bigger than expected and it really, you know, beats the crap out of you, you're probably going to be soaked, exhausted, and cold. And if you have a chance to cross a road and bail into town, you're gonna take that opportunity. Despite the authorities extensively searching the area for weeks on foot and also using helicopters, no sign of Chris 
was ever found. And this is where I need to start raising a few questions. First of all, since Chris was through hiking, he almost certainly would have been sticking to the PCT or at the very least other established trails in the area. I really highly doubt he would have been purposely going off trail. This means that if he did succumb to the elements during the storm, how is it that his body wasn't recovered on or very close to the PCT? I'm just surprised that nobody found him, honestly. And, and obviously a major storm definitely complicates things. Like maybe he became disorientated or maybe he lost the trail because of low visibility or something. This is definitely possible, but still the PCT is very well traveled and very well marked. I mean, the trail is very wide. It's hard to miss. So again, if there's a storm, you never know what can happen, but I don't know. I just, it just seems bizarre to me. And here's another question. What happened to all of Chris Fowler's gear? Chris was known to be carrying a green Thermarest Z-Lite sleeping pad, a bright blue tarp, a big Agnes Fairview 1 tent, which is a very large tent, by the way. It definitely would have stuck out if it was set up close to the trail. A black and orange ULA backpack, among many other pieces of backpacking gear. And interestingly enough, Chris was also carrying a spot GPS device, which has an SOS button on it. But unfortunately, he had not activated the subscription service to the GPS device, which meant he was unable unable to use it and unable to call for help. None of his gear has ever been recovered, which I just think is super bizarre. Every year since his disappearance in 2016, hundreds of through hikers would have hiked through that exact area he went missing. And that's just the through hikers. There's also gonna be hundreds of day hikers, weekend backpackers, and section hikers. And despite all of this foot traffic going through that area, none of his gear has ever been found. And here's the clinker. There are some possible explanations as to why this is the case. There have been three unconfirmed sightings of Chris outside of the section of trail that he went missing on, that section from White Pass to Chinook Pass. And the interesting thing about these unconfirmed sightings is that Two of them have been given little to almost no coverage by the media, despite being of interest to Chris's family. And one thing I wanna say here is that I know a decent amount of people watch my channel that will be on the PCT either next year or sometime in the future. So if that's you, just please keep an eye out for any random gear on the side of the trail or near the trail when you're hiking north of White Pass. And if you do find something, Chris's stepmother, Sally, has very specific instructions for what she wants you to do. I spoke with her about this. She asked that you stand directly over the items, take pictures, and get the coordinates of the location. Also, take photos of the surrounding areas and, and contact her. You can do that through this Facebook group I have on the screen right now. I will also have a link to it in the description of the video. So back to these unconfirmed sightings of Chris. I read through almost every news article I could find about his disappearance while researching for this video, and in all of those articles, I only found one unconfirmed sighting of Chris that was consistently reported on. And so when I started to chat with Sally, Chris's stepmother, in order to get more information for the video, I was really surprised to learn that there's actually two more unconfirmed sightings of Chris that have received very, very little attention from the media. The sighting that did get some attention was by two hunters who supposedly spoke with Chris near Blowout Mountain on October 22nd. Blowout Mountain is about 60 miles north of White Pass where Chris was last seen. Despite this unconfirmed sighting, there have been a lot of inconsistencies in these hunters' story. So most sources don't really consider this sighting to be credible and that includes Chris's stepmother, Sally. The next unconfirmed potential sighting happened in the town of Greenwater, Washington. According to Sally, a bartender at the Greenwater Tavern said a man came in on around October 13th or October 14th, looking wet and tired and gave the trail name Sherpa. Again, that was Chris's trail name. The bartender offered him a free meal, but he turned her down. And when the bartender went into the back room, the man left the restaurant and that was the end of it. Obviously, there's no way to confirm that the man in the bar was in fact Chris, but the bartender has never wavered from her story. And the timeline of this also checks out because Greenwater can be accessed from Chinook Pass, and it makes sense that Chris could have been there only a day or two after leaving White Pass. The last unconfirmed potential sighting of Chris happened in the town of Mazama, Washington around October 15th. Again, I think Mazama 
is how you say that. I'm not exactly sure, so bear with me. This town is much further north than White Pass. It's very close to the end of the PCT near the Canadian border. According to an employee at the Mazama store who was interviewed by Chris's stepmother, Sally, a man came into the store and while he was making a purchase, he exchanged trail names with that employee and gave the trail name Sherpa. In addition to this, it's known that Chris shipped a resupply box to another store in Mazama, and that store is called Goat's Beard, and this box was never found at the store after Chris went missing. This means that it was either lost by the store, it was picked up by Chris, which would confirm that he was there, or it was never sent. Unfortunately, the store did not keep records of which boxes were getting picked up and you know, keeping track of people's names and stuff. So there's really no way to verify which of those three options is correct. So this sighting would seem somewhat credible, but unfortunately there are a few pieces of evidence kind of working against it as well. Supposedly when Chris was at that first store, there were some other hikers there that he was speaking to. This is all according to that employee once again, but all of those hikers were later interviewed and none of them remembered talking to Chris or any other hiker. Another thing to note here is that because Mazama is pretty far away from White Pass, it just seems unlikely that he would have, basically impossible, that he would have been able to make it all the way up there by October 15th. However, when I was talking with Sally, she told me that Chris had been known to hitchhike, and so it's definitely possible that he got a ride further north in order to go and finish that last section of the trail before the season ended, before it got too cold and snowy. I want to once again reiterate that neither the Greenwater or the Mazama potential sightings are confirmed. And in addition to that, there was no activity on Chris's cell phone or his credit card in either one of those areas after he disappeared. My understanding is that both of these unconfirmed sightings were investigated by the authorities at the time, but they were ultimately ruled as unreliable. But it's just strange to me that the unconfirmed sighting by the hunters was pretty largely talked about in the news, but these other two unconfirmed sightings, which seem to be a little bit more credible than that first one, have mostly been ignored. And there's just so many unanswered questions about what happened to Chris Fowler. Why hasn't his gear been recovered? Despite the storm coming through, I'm sure there were still some other hikers on the trail, so how was he not seen by anybody after he left White Pass? And ultimately, the big question is, what could have possibly happened to him? As of today, we may not know the answer to that question but I am confident that Chris will be discovered someday soon. And this is largely due to the efforts of the Fowler O'Sullivan Foundation, which was formed by a lady named Kathy Tarr and the families of Chris Fowler and David O'Sullivan, who is another hiker who went missing on the PCT. The Fowler O'Sullivan Foundation is continuing the efforts to find both hikers, help families of other missing hikers, and providing information and resources for hikers to stay safe on the trail. I think this is really awesome. They actually give away Garmin inReach GPS devices to future PCT hikers. And so I wanna encourage everybody watching this video to go to fofound.org and read more about their work. And honestly, consider making a donation. One more time, that's fofound.org. And I also have a link to the website in the description. Please help me get to 50,000 subscribers, guys. I'm so close. The vast majority of people who watch these videos are not subscribed. So if that's you, please hit that subscribe button. And I also want to say a special thank you to Sally Fowler because she gave me so much information when I was researching this case. She answered every single question that I had, even some very tedious small details. And I'm so greatly appreciative of that. I really hope that Chris's family gets some answers very soon about what happened to him.